9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Ah, all right. Watch the stream live. Oh, wow. I wonder if it's anybody's on board. Oh, it says that. Uh, right. Okay. Well, nobody's here yet. Here are, well, here's the assignment questions. And here are the, uh, the questions we're going to be doing today. So let's, uh, let's start. Um, so 6.07. <clears throat> One problem I found with Eric Mazur's book is that there's not much redundancy between the questions. These questions are all clever, but you know, if he has one question, there are other that are kind of like it, but not really covering the same material. And that makes it difficult for me because I want to be able to do questions that are similar to, if not entirely overlapping with the, uh, the questions on the assignment. Joseph Lee says, hello, Tilda, hello, Tilda. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> without further ado, 6.07. The question goes, a woman standing beside a road hears a car accelerate from rest to 30 meters per second. Describe the car's motion as seen by the driver of a truck traveling in the same direction as the car at a constant 30 meters per second. What if the truck is moving in the opposite direction? Is the direction of the acceleration of the car affected by the constant velocity of the truck driver relative to Earth? Oh, what a fantastic question. <clears throat> so, um, let's draw a little picture. Here's the lady. right she's standing on the side of the road and she sees a car accelerate guess it's a car from cars <clears throat> so it's going to accelerate in that direction and it has initial velocity zero let's suppose oh yeah from rest to 30 meters per second. So a time later, now it's going 30 meters per second. <clears throat> this whole time, there's a truck. And the truck is on the road, I draw a truck. Yes, that's what a truck looks like. And it's traveling at 30 meters per second that way. All right, so the truck goes this way. Initially, what's the relative velocity? Call this truck. The velocity of the truck, of the car relative to the truck, is going to be the velocity of the car relative to the woman minus the velocity of the truck relative to the woman. <clears throat> so it's going to be 0 minus 30 meters per second at the start. Does that make sense? Certainly it makes sense. This car is going, this truck goes this way. He sees this car, initially the car is sitting still. So he says, this car is moving that way at 30 meters per second. Way down the road, when the car finally manages to accelerate up to speed, it's now moving at 30 meters per second. The truck's moving at 30 meters per second. And <clears throat> final velocity. Zero meters per second. So the truck initially goes, whoa, that car is moving backwards super fast. And then after a while, they're moving at the same velocity. So the distance between them stops changing. 
Right? Like when you're matching the velocity of the car in front of you in traffic, the distance between you and them doesn't change. And so you're saying they're not moving at all. So how does the truck describe this motion? According to the truck, <clears throat> here's the truck's POV. Truck just kind of sits still. Relative to the truck, the car starts out moving backwards at 30 meters per second. And then it spins its tires and spins its tires. And then after a while, it stops moving. Okay, next question. All right, so if they underwent a constant acceleration, the equation for the constant acceleration would be V final is equal to V initial plus A T, right? Or alternatively, V final minus V initial divided by T is equal to A. How do we answer these questions about accelerations? Is the direction of the acceleration of the car affected by the constant velocity of the truck relative to Earth? This woman sees the car accelerating that way. At what acceleration? Well, I don't know. It depends on how much time it takes. But in this time interval, they go from 0 to plus 30. How does the, oh, you can't see it. <clears throat> oh, geez. Also, it's not very in focus, is it? Let's see if I can press the focus button. Boop. All right. So, acceleration. Does, it, does the truck see the car have the same acceleration as the lady does? Um, so to reiterate what I was just saying, and you couldn't see it on the page, <clears throat> Acceleration is going to be the V final minus V initial divided by the amount of time it took, right? So for the lady, the V final is going to be 30 meters per second. The V initial is going to be zero. I don't know what delta T is. For the truck, V final is going to be 30 minus the truck's velocity. V initial is going to be zero minus the truck's velocity we'll divide it by delta t you know that the truck and the car the truck and the lady both see the same amount of time pass as the motion changes so cancel cancel this becomes 30 over delta t it's going to be the same acceleration both of them are going to see the same acceleration and this is true for any uh, reference frame, any constant frame. You'll see the same acceleration. Every constant inertial frame, constant velocity. Want to see? A is equal to V final according to the lady minus the frames. We'll call it I don't know B minus v initial according to the lady that's v b oh man and anyway, my moral of the story is v f zero minus v i zero for delta t and these two cancel out so 
So algebraically speaking, they're all going to have the same acceleration. All right, whatever. The question's no good. <clears throat> now my page is covered in dots. Uh, all right, so now 6.67. Let's see what that question is. 6.667 in the textbook says, just as a car passes a school crossing guard, a child throws a toy from the back seat of the car towards his sister in the front seat. The toy is thrown at speed two meters per second relative to the car, and the car is traveling 10 meters a second relative to the earth. Draw the velocity vectors for the toy, the car, and the crossing guard from the reference frame of A, the car, B, the guard, C, the toy. <laughs> hmm. I wonder why I chose this question. Anyway, <clears throat> let's draw a little who's the what's it thing. Here's our crossing guard. Crossing guards hold octagons. That's what I know about crossing guards. And they have sashes. Here is the car. The thing about this car is that it has a very big window. And so its velocity is 10 meters per second relative to this guy. V car to the origin. I'll call him origin. I'll give him a little origin curly Q. You know people are origins because they have a little origin shaped thing. And then there's a little kid in here. And another little kid in here. And relative to these guys, there is a toy. What kind of toy should I draw? Let's not get too fancy. It's a ball. Okay. V ball relative to this car is two meters per second. Okay. So this kid, this kid sitting still in the car, see this ball going this way at two meters per second. The crossing guard sees the car go past <coughs> at 10 meters per second. So, um, the V ball crossing guard. I wonder how I figure that out. Stop shouting, add them <laughs> into the camera. Yeah, I know you add them. Here's the thing. VBC is equal to VBO O minus V C O, right? So if this is two meters per second and this is 10 meters per second, then V B O is going to be, move this to the side, 12 meters per second. You dig? All right. Uh, so let's do this game. Draw the velocities of the toy car. The toy, the car, and the crossing guard. Toy. Its velocity relative to the car is going to be like that. The car's velocity uh, is going to be zero. It sits at rest. Uh, and the guard, its velocity is going to go that way. Minus 10 meters per second. What about the toy, the car, the guard, relative to the guard, part B? The toy is going to go, uh, this is relative to the guard, so the toy is going to go extra fast. The car is just going to go medium fast, and the guard is just going to sit still. What about relative to the toy? Toy sits still. 
in its own frame, but it sees the car moving this way at two meters per second, and it sees the guard moving super fast at 12 meters per second. That makes sense. All right. <clears throat> hmm. All right. Uh, next question. <coughs> 6.17. I'm coughing a lot. I wonder if I'm coming down with something. I hope not. You place a 10, uh, 0.1 kilogram sonic ranger on a low friction track. Uh, I wonder which sonic ranger is. I was about to draw a Sonic the Hedgehog in a cowboy hat, but it occurs to me that a Sonic Ranger is probably a little device that sends out sound waves and figures out how far things are away from them. So it figures out the range to things. It goes beep, and it listens for a beep, and it's like, that took three seconds, so it must be three times the speed of sound divided by the two distance away. Okay, so we know what it is. It tells us the distance of things. You place a blah sonic ranger on a low friction track in front of a 0 0.5 kilogram cart to measure the cart's velocity in the Earth's reference frame, which turns out to be one I hat. The cart hits the ranger in a totally inelastic collision that means they stick together and the two objects then move forward together a friend is running towards the cart with a velocity of minus three meters per second with her sonic ranger on and pointed at the cart what is the momentum of the cart with the ranger stuck to it in my friend's reference frame what velocity does her sonic ranger measure for the cart after the collision. Yes. All right. Well, <clears throat> it's a weird question. Um, uh, so there's going to be a before and after to this. Always draw a picture. Why do you need to draw a picture? Just remember, you draw a picture so that you have enough time to think about how to answer the question. That's my silent ranger. That's my cart. This is moving at one meters per second, I think. I hats this way. And then there's my friend. She's going that way at minus three meters per second. And she has a Sonic Ranger too. It's like a Power Ranger. All right. <clears throat> so V is equal to zero. And this mass is 0 0.5 kilograms. And this mass is 0.1 kilogram and so afterwards my helpful friend unhappy that the sonic ranger has broken boo still running at meters per second Total mass here is 0 0.6 kilograms. All right, so now that I've played around with it, let's start doing the question. I wonder who's watching the stream. Oh, there's four people watching the stream. Hi, everybody. I can read the chat, you know. Um, you shouldn't write in the chat window. I mean, you can if you want. If you write in the chat window, uh, I'll probably respond to it glibly, and then nobody watching this archive video will have any idea what I'm talking about, but I presume that the sound is working fine. All right, so where were we? Um, let's reread the question. Sonic Ranger on a low friction track. Here's the crack. Here's the Sonic Ranger. 
Here's the cart. Here's the cart's velocity. I see. The Sonic Ranger tells me what this velocity is. I'm distracted, as I always am. And the Sonic Ranger hits the cart. Boop. And the two objects move forward together. Don't know that velocity. All right. So before we go any further, let's uh, let's let's work through this problem. Um, this is a conservation of momentum question, obviously. So the initial momentum is going to equal the final momentum. The initial momentum is one times zero point five plus zero point one times zero point five kilogram meters per second. P final is some velocity times 0 0.6. So this velocity, hold on, hold on a second. My wife's messaging me. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. Hi. I'm recording a video. <clears throat> spaghetti for dinner. Um, all right, so it's going to be 0 0.5 kilogram meters per second divided by 0 0.6. This calculator is my favorite. 0 0.83 meters per second. All right. All right, so what's the momentum of the cart? with the ranger stuck to it in my friend's reference frame. Okay, so my friend is running at V, all right, so we'll call it um, V cart friend is equal to V cart minus V friend. Um, so the carts, its velocity is 0 0.83 and the friend's velocity is minus three so it's 3.83. And so the momentum cart is seen by the friend is 0 0.6 kilograms times 3.83 meters per second, which is equal to six times 3.83, 2.2 kilogram meters per second. Next question. What velocity does her sonic ranger measure for the cart after the collision? Hmm. Hey, this is really fun um, because there's an alternative way to do this question. So uh, the velocity that the, that the ranger is going to measure is going to be this, right? <clears throat> But there's an alternative way to do that, which is we know that momentum is conserved, right? And the idea is that the laws of physics are going to be the same regardless which inertial reference frame you're moving in. So standing on the ground is an inertial reference frame. My friend is moving with constant velocity. So she also has an inertial reference frame. And so the deal is she will also say momentum's conserved. According to her, V cart, I don't know, initial, according to my friend, is going to be um, one minus minus three, four meters per second. And so the momentum should be the mass times four, which is two kilogram meters per second. Whoa, 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 did I make a mistake here? Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Um, 0 0.1 kilogram. 
So it's 2 divided by 0 0.6, 3.333. Huh. Hmm. Where did I make my mistake? I don't know. Any of you see where the mistake is? Let me see. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so. This person says momentum's conserved. So does a standing still. According to a standing still, total momentum is 1 meter second plus 0.5 plus 0. Oh, 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 come on. Oh, ha, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, uh, this is wrong. It's not wrong to say that the momentum's conserved, but there's a cart, and there's also a ranger, according to the friend. And the ranger's sitting still, but my friend says that it is moving with three meters per second to the right. <clears throat> So the cart's momentum is this, and my uh, ranger's momentum is going to be 3 times 0 0.1, so it's 0 0.3, and so the total momentum is 2 plus 0 0.3, which is 2.3 kilogram meters per second, which is the same as that number. Ah, I did it. I did it. Oh, what fountain pen is this? This is a, oh, okay. So somebody on the chat wants to know what, somebody named Crapping Zombie. Holy jeez, guys, get good names. Huh. Anyway, somebody on the chat wants to know what kind of fountain pen is. This is a Parker fountain pen. It's fancy. It cost $100. I got it for my birthday when I turned 35, I think. I'm not much older than 35. <clears throat> All right, where were we? Um, that's 6.17. The next one's 6.21. Uh, 6.21. Really? Okay. Is the kinetic energy of a system zero when measured from the zero momentum reference frame for the system? Uh, it's not. It can be, but it's not. Uh, so the answer is not usually. Let's uh, let's consider a, an example here. Um, two examples. Um, let's see. Uh, one kilogram moves at two meters per second. And this one is also one kilogram, and it moves two meters per second. Okay? <clears throat> uh, the total momentum of the system is going to be two times one plus two times one, so that is four meters per second, kilogram meters per second. And so the velocity of the system is going to be P total divided by the total mass. So it's going to be 4 divided by 2, which is 2 meters per second. OK? So that means that the center of the mass of the system, wherever it is, is moving at 2 meters per second. Not surprising at all, given that they're both moving at the same speed. Now, now, <clears throat> zero momentum frame is one that's also moving at two meters per second, right? A zero momentum frame is the one whose velocity matches the velocity of the center of mass. Um, so in this case, VA relative to zero is going to be two minus two. VB according to zero is going to be two minus two equals zero. Oh, there's someone at the door. Hold on. If I get murdered, uh, call the cops. <clears throat> I'm interrupting your stream. You right? sure are. Okay. Uh, the new format? Yes. Real tight for time. Okay. Really, really, like, 
I went over it almost all of it. You know, they're like 50 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So I went to the whole hour. Okay. Because I had a couple where I knew that there's no class after, so okay. I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah. But it's like crazy, crazy type of time. You go over it in 10 minutes. Even when I even when I hit that 10 minute mark. Yeah. It was just now everyone's, I don't know, 30 minutes. They're barely like working when that happens. Uh -huh. I've got. Every class basically already has a person where one of you is in their group. Yeah, yeah, school. right. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. But how'd it go? Oh, um, the example I think was a little too easy, the one that I did. And the reason I say that is because everyone's like, you know, you're doing that. It's kind of what it was. And then I think a lot, I'm, a, a couple people got messed up in that um, they would look at it and they would say, oh, okay, well, in the example, the tension is just the gravity of the first, yeah. or of, of, of A, right. right? Because in that scenario, the net force is zero, and then they're equal to each other, right? Right. And they tried to do that on the next one, right. which doesn't work, because it's a mountain, yes. and you don't know the tension. Right. Um, but I don't know, I think most people didn't get to necessarily answering it, but they got, they, they understood filling out what they know and don't know. Okay. And why it is as it is. Huh. But not not a ton of people got to actually like start trying to answer for tension or acceleration. Mm, so it went bad. I mean the marks were fine because a good amount of the mark distribution was No and don't know. Towards no and don't know exactly. More than half. Right? Well what was the how were they happy? With how it went well no. that's the thing is after it. So when, uh, like, at the end of, because I'm, like, blitzing through the example, yeah. because it's, you know, tight for time, right. I finished the example, I was like, okay, was that good? Do you guys like this? Would you like it to continue? And everyone was like, hmm. Right. That was kind of, that was about the reaction I got. It was, like, lightly agreed. Not strongly, not agree, lightly agreed. Mm. So if it was, like, you know, it was, like, a half, if, if strongly agree was two, three right. was one. Okay. And zero is yeah, yeah. right. It was, I, but I think maybe that would be helpful when they're move, when they're moving on to new stuff. Maybe mm -hmm. seeing examples. Okay, I've noticed that not a lot of people felt followed along on paper. They would s see what I'm doing, would watch what I'm doing, but it wasn't like they were like filling things in mm -hmm. on the page or anything. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as I said we're not marking, number, you're not getting marks for number two, they're like, oh okay. You know, celebrate, throw everything away. That was kind of that was kind of how it was, but they they watched. I mean, they're I mean, they're a captive audience, right? Mm -hmm. And anytime anyone was talking, it was like, yeah, told them to pay attention. Right. But yeah, I that sort of I don't know if that makes sense. Right. They weren't doing; they were just watching. Right, right. And I did leave it all up so they could like reference. Yeah, things. yeah, sure. The other thing I had to explain to a lot of groups why you can let the angle of the slope be the angle. That's fine. From that, yeah. that was fine. That, but, that, but that held a lot of people because they would just be like, I don't understand. Okay. Right? Um, yeah, I think it was, mm -hmm. it went okay. Like it, it wasn't horrible it, at all. I think a lot of people were satisfied with how much they were able to do mm. because it felt like they did a lot just by doing the knowns and unknowns. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they didn't get to solve for it. They didn't solve for T, but most groups were able to figure out, oh, well, I don't know A and I don't know T, but we have, we know that the acceleration is the same for both of them, and we know that the tension is the same for both of them, which means we have two equations, two variables. Most people got to that, but mm -hmm. then we were out of time. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Thank you. All right. Cool. <clears throat>
you, it can happen. It can happen. Um, not always, though. Let's consider another example. Um, uh, one kilogram, and it's moving at two meters per second. And then uh, B, let's say it's two kilograms, and it's moving at four meters per second. And it's moving at four meters per second. All right. So P total is going to be one times two plus two times four. So that's going to be, oh, geez, I wanted to go the other way. Oh, right. cancel, 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 cancel. I'm just having one of those days, you guys. Just having one of those days. Just forgive me having one of those days. Uh, all right, so what was I saying? A is one kilogram. It's going this way at two meters per second. B um, is two kilograms, and it's going at four meters per second, that way, that way. All right, that's what I originally wrote. So P total, total momentum in this frame is uh, one times two plus two times four, wait, minus two times four. So it's two minus eight, so it's minus six kilogram meters per second. And so the total mass is three kilograms. And so the velocity of the system is P tot divided by M tot. So minus six divided by three, minus two meters per second. You dig? And that means that the center of mass is moving this way at two meters per second. Okay? The system is moving to the left at two meters per second. And that means that if I had a person here moving with the same velocity, they would see zero momentum. <clears throat> Vz relative to the ground is minus two meters per second. And as a demonstration, uh, V of A relative to the origin would be A zero minus Vz zero. V Bz V B zero minus V origin Z origin. So this would be two minus minus two and this would be minus four minus minus two so this is minus two meters per second and this is plus four meters per second so relative to this pink dude the zero reference frame the total momentum is going to be one kilogram times four plus two kilograms times minus two. So that's four minus four is equal to zero. The total momentum is zero, and that's why they call it the zero momentum reference frame. But how much kinetic energy does this have? Well, okay, so it's gonna be one half times the mass of the first object times its speed. One half times the mass of the second object times its speed. So that is 16 divided by 2 is 8. And this is 4. 12 joules. All right. So in spite of the fact that uh, it has zero momentum in this reference frame, it still has kinetic energy. Because in this person's reference frame, according to the pink dude, uh, A is moving that 4 meters per second and B is moving like that at two meters per second. Okay, so this is all of kinetic energy. Just because you're in the zero momentum reference frame doesn't mean there's gonna be no kinetic energy. What it means though is that this is the convertible kinetic energy. So um, if they were to collide and stick together, the total momentum is zero. So if they were to collide and stick together, 
they wouldn't be moving. So if they were going to collide and stick together, the product of them smushing together would have zero kinetic energy. So if they were to collide and stick together, all of this energy would turn into heat. So this is the most energy that can turn into heat. That's why it's called the convertible kinetic energy. Next question. Um, next it's 633. <clears throat> 6.33, all right. This one looks fun. Did I did see 621? I did. Um, all right, 633. Riding up an escalator while staying on the same step for the whole ride takes 30 seconds. And walking up the same escalator takes 20 seconds. How long does it take to walk down the up escalator? How long down up? <laughs> oh, you didn't get to see me write that out. How long does it take to go down the up escalator? That's a great question. Um, all right, well, uh, <laughs> if somebody came up to me on the street and asked if this question had an answer, I'd be like, I don't know. I don't think that question has an answer. But because it was in the textbook, it must have an answer. So V stairs. And now there's V stairs and there's V lady relative to the stairs. Okay. Um, so, and what's more, uh, the stairs have some distance along them. I'll call it um, D. All right, so. Let's write some stuff out. We know that if you're traveling up the up escalator, it takes 30 seconds, right? And we know that if you're traveling up the escalator and it's, you're moving on the escalator and the escalator's moving, it takes 20 seconds. And what we want to know is how much time it takes to walk down the up escalator. So the argument here is D is going to be the same, right? And VS is going to be the same, but VLS is going to switch directions, all right? So, we want to know what minus D divided by <clears throat> minus VLS plus VS is equal to. Oh, geez. How do you even do this? Oh, here, I got an answer. Um, we can rearrange these equations. So D over 30 is equal to Vs. And D over 20 is Vls plus Vs. This is the speed relative to the stairs, and this is the velocity of the stairs. So VLS is equal to D over 20 minus D over 30. Oh, great. I love adding fractions. Um, so this is 3D over 60 minus 2D over 60. So this is D over 60. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, 
So, so you, let's check. VLS plus VS, that's the speed you're going up the elevator. It's D over 60 plus D over 30, right? And so this becomes 3D over 60, so that's D over 20. Yeah, it checks, checks out. Uh, okay, fine. Um, okay, so now, now what are we going to do? Um, minus D. Why is it minus D? It's minus D because that's the displacement, I think. Yeah, yeah, of course. This thing represents the speed. I put the minus sign to denote going downhill, and the overall displacement's also downhill. If I didn't put that there, you just get a negative number, which isn't the end of the world. But I'm not sure if this is going to work, you guys. 60 plus Vs is D over 30. Oh, there's nothing. You know, if there's one thing better than it's adding fractions, it's adding fractions when you're... Uh, <laughs> uh, so this is 2D over 60. That's this guy. Minus D over 60. So it's minus D over 60. D divided by 60, 60, minus 60 seconds. Huh. I'm going to read this question again. Riding up an escalator while staying on the same step for a whole ride takes 30 seconds. Walking up the same escalator takes 20 seconds. How long does it take to walk down the up escalator? But dude, like to walk down the up escalator, you need to go faster your speed on the escalator has to be faster than the speed going down the escalator. And 1 over 30, yeah, let's say it's 30 over 30. This speed is demonstrably smaller than this speed. So if you try to walk down the up escalator, your overall velocity is going to be upwards. So you can't walk down it. I don't know, maybe this is a trick question. Hey, this is, these questions have answers, don't they? Let's see what the answer is. 33. Chapter 6. Question 33. Oh, question 33 answer. You do not walk fast enough to do this. Thanks. Thanks. I guess I don't walk fast enough. Sorry, Missouri. <sighs> All right, uh, what do we have? 368. Ooh, boy, time flew. Well, I did get briefed about all that physics stuff. Three, uh, so 638. Determine the location of the center of mass of the system shown in 3638. There's three disks. Or they're made of sheet metal of the same material. And the diameters are one meter, two meters, and three meters. Well, they're diameters. Hold on. So the radius is 0 0.5, and this radius is 1, and this radius is 1.5. Oh, hey, great. Hooray. All right, well, this question's weird. Okay, so the deal is that there are three objects. Each one's are circles, and they're made of the same material. So their mass is going to be the area times the density. I don't know what the density is, but I can figure out what these areas are. 
uh, the mass for one is uh, pi 0 0.5 squared times rho. Mass for two is pi <clears throat> 0. Point, uh, pi one rho. M three is pi 1.5. Point five times point five times pi. Oh point seven eight five rho. And this is three point one four rho. And this is point five times one point five times pi. Six point zero seven rho. Okay. Yeah, this question is a little bit outside the purview. I don't know if I'd ask you this question in the course, but it's a fun question. So where's the center of mass? To figure out what the center of mass is, you need to multiply the mass times the positions of each object. There's a trick here. And that trick is, where are you going to put the origin? Wait, hold on. Determine the location of the center of mass of the system. Okay, so yeah, uh, this is how you do it. So here's the question. Anytime you want to talk about a position vector, you need an origin. So where are you going to put the origin? Now, if you were a sucker, you'd put the origin over here. Okay, you say they're all lined up here. I'm going to put the origin over here like a sucker. And then the deal is that they're all circles. So the center of mass of each circle is going to be right in the middle of it. I don't need to teach you that. Um, and then so the first position is going to be uh, at x is equal to 0 0.5 because the radius is 0 0.5. Do that. And then x2, its position is going to be, it's 1 across, so it's 1, 2. And x3 is going to be 1, 2, 3.5. Yeah, well, you know what? We're here. Why not? <laughs> oh, right. Those numbers are gross. Okay, well, whatever. I can just, I'll just do it. Um, 0 0.5 times 0.785. That's 0 0.3925 times rho. Plus, second mass, 3.14 times distance. The third one, 3.5 times 7.07. 24.74 rho. Okay, so um, add all those up. And that's 0 0.3925, 6.28 plus 24.74. That's 314, 31.41 times rho. Okay, so to find the center of mass, you're going to take all these numbers and you're going to divide them by the total mass. So divided by the total mass. What's the total mass? It's 0 0.785 plus 3.14 plus 7.07 times rho. <clears throat> and that's, that's, the rows cancel out. Cancel, cancel. Um, 0 0.785 plus 3.14 plus 7.07. So it's 31.41 divided by answer. So the result is a position, and that position is relative to the origin. So it's going to be 2.856. Where is that? Let's see, this is one, two. It's going to be over here. OK. How far is that? That's a 0.856 from the right of the thing. OK, like I said, there's a second way to do this. 
it depends on where we put the origin, right? So there's a clever way to pull the origin, which is you put the origin right in the middle of it, wherever you want, usually in the middle of one of these objects. So I'm going to redo this calculation and put the origin there. Why? Because if I put the origin there, <clears throat> x1 is going to be at, let's see, it's uh, 1.5. Minus 1.5, x2 is going to be 0, and x3 is going to be 1, 2.5. Do all this multiplying. So it's going to be 0 0.785 times rho times minus 1.5 plus 3.14 rho times 0. It's supposed to be 0, not origin. 0 um, plus 2.5 times 7.07 .07 times rho. All right, let's see what we get. <clears throat> Minus 1.5 times 0.785 plus 2.5 times 7.07 .07, all divided by 0.785 plus 3.14 plus 7.07. .07. Okay, I'm going to write down the number I got. I think it's wrong. I'm going to try this calculation again. 0.785 times minus 1.5, negative number, plus 2.5 times 7.07, .07, boop, divided by. Five. What's the answer? One point five. Am I doing something wrong? That's so weird. You should give me the same answer every time. All right. Well, what am I doing wrong here? Seven point oh seven. Let's see. This radius is two, so that's plus two point five. This is radius point five, so it's one five. Maybe the original numbers were wrong. Um, so starting from the left, that is definitely at 0.5. This one is at 1, 2, sure. This one is at 1, 2, 3, 4.5. Ah, I found my mistake. If these uh, streaming sessions are a lesson in anything, it's that you should check your flippin' math often as you can because People make mistakes. So then this is 31.8, one fire, add them up. That's 38.48 divided by and eight high plus three point one four this number is supposed to be three three point five three point five so where is that let's see so this is one two three it's uh oh point five away from this border and that's exactly the number I got down here, 1.5. Boop. All right. So I've done four questions, and I've gotten two of them wrong so far. I'm batting 100. <clears throat> if you don't know, batting 100 is a, is a term when it means you want to hit something 100 times with a bat. 
Um, okay, so that was 6.38, and the next is 6.41. Hey, it's another center of mass questions. Center of mass questions are really cool. Okay, so determine the position of the center of mass of the baton shown in blah picture, taking the origin of my coordinate axis to be A, the center of the larger ball, B, the center of the smaller ball, C, Oh, hey, you know what? This question is all about that uh, that thing, that trick I just showed you. <clears throat> so I'm only going to do one of these because I want to go home. So this is 0.2 kilograms. And this bar is one meter long. And it's 0.1 kilograms. And this ball is 0.1 kilograms. A, from the center of the larger ball. So there's three masses in the system. M1, it's right there. M2, it's at a position halfway down. And M3. Okay. So, relative to the middle of the little ball, uh, all right, so the uh, M total is 0 0.4 kilograms. So in this case, it will be 0 times 0 0.2 plus, all right, its position is 0 0.5 and its mass is 0 0.1. And the third one is a position 1 and its mass is 0 0.1, all divided by 0 0.4. And the result is 0.5 times 0 0.1 plus 0.1 divided by 0.4, 0 0.375 meters, all right? So it's 0 0.375 meters away from the center, which is, I don't know, here. Uh, center of the smaller ball. Um, center of the smaller ball, x1, all right, is going to be at minus 1. Mass 1 is 0 0.2. x2 is minus 0 0.5, and its mass is 0 0.1 x3 is at 0, and its mass is 0 0.1, all divided by 0 0.4. Minus 1 times 0.2, minus 0.5 times 0.1, divided by 0.4. Oh, 0.625 meters. Which makes sense absolutely because that's the distance that way. And there's the same point. Here's the thing every time you calculate the center of mass, you're going to get a different number. That's numbers different from that. But they're going to correspond to the same point. They're only different because all the numbers we're putting in are relative to different origins. All right, now, 6.61, then I get to go home. 6.61, aw, cute. Quoth, a mother penguin and a chick are on a flat, icy surface. I'm gonna draw them. Right? And a baby penguin.
Yay! It's wearing a little backpack because it's going to school. Okay. <laughs> All right. A mother and a chick are on a flat icy surface. The mother is lying at rest 0 0.5 meters from the edge of the water. The chick, which has one-fourth the mother's inertia, is sliding, collides with her inelastically, bounces back one-eighth of its original speed. The mother wakes up as she hits the water 0 0.4 seconds later. How fast was the chick going when it hit her? <laughs> she first creepers. What a life. All right. So, um, Final mom velocity. Now, I think this is to mean that the chick, after the collision, final chick is in the opposite direction and is so v chick initial is equal to minus v let's say and the final is plus let's see one fourth the inertia sliding one eighth the original speed V over eight. Okay. So the mother wakes up as she hits the water 0 0.4 seconds later. Mom hits water 0 0.4 seconds later. Distance is minus 0 0.5 so the velocity final of the mom is minus 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.4 okay so here's the mom's mass big M. Here's the baby's mass, which is M over 4. M over 4. Big M. The total momentum afterwards is going to be uh, V final mom times the mom's mass plus V final for the chick times the chick's mess. Chick's mess. It's like a holiday. Uh, and this is plus V times M over eight times four. The initial momentum is Mom's velocity, zero. Mom's inertia, m. Uh, baby chick's inertia is v m over four.
<clears throat> so, for the momentums to be equal, minus Vm over 4 has to equal minus 1.25 times m plus Vm over 32. Cancel. <clears throat> So this is minus 0 0.25 times V minus, it's 1 over 32, 0 0.031 times V is equal to minus 1.25. So 0 0.28 times V is equal to 1.25. So V is equal to 4.44 meters per second. Hmm, I wonder if that's right. Let's look at the back of the book. Do you guys use the back of the book? Sometimes the answers to math questions are in the back of the book. Math profs are pretty canny, though, so rarely ask questions. These answers are in the back of the book. Where's the freaking thing? Okay, here we are. Oh, there's so many chapters to do. There's so much te physics to teach, and I never get to teach any of it. Unless we spend so much time on mechanics. It's okay, I love mechanics. 6.61. Oh, yeah, I got it right. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, all right. Uh, is there any else in this question that's interesting? To a penguin paddling directly towards them at one meters per second, what's the mother's momentum before and after the collision in terms of M mother? Oh, whatever. You can do that. All right. That's it for the questions. Anybody have any questions in chat room? We got any questions? No, nobody's really interacting with me on the chat tonight. I wonder if people are still watching. Ah. Oh, three people are watching. Good work, everybody. All right, well, that's it for me tonight. Uh, good night.